Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so earlier today, we got a very small data download on Global, and that has finally given us the confirmation through the obviously the game files that were added of the date for part two of this current celebration and the final celebration that is leading to the start of the anniversary, or at least I guess the countdown to the anniversary campaign. And unfortunately. It is uh, looking as dry as Dokon has been for the last uh, couple of weeks, I guess, overall. Because, uh, unfortunately, it always seems to be this way before the anniversary. And uh, I see a lot of people make that excuse. They're like, oh, you know, it's always like this just before a big celebration. But as we've talked about many times in the past, there's no reason why it has to be. Um, Global is obviously somewhat still following the same blueprint as JP. Um, so obviously they do mostly copy what they are doing and what they're including in celebrations But this applies to both global and JP in these quieter times. It would be very very easy I saw almost everybody that was doing that trend of making the uh, Dokkan takes for likes on the tweet thing um, I did a video about my one as well, but like I saw almost everybody in there mention the fact that like in these dry celebrations It would literally take five minutes. It's like a couple of lines of code for them to add in missions to the GT Goku event, the Vegeta event, even like collection of epic battles, that long forgotten event. Like obviously we're not asking them to bring out new Super Battle Road stages, even though that I imagine is probably not that difficult. But yeah, events that we have in the game, like the Vegeta event, the GT Goku event, just throw us like a couple of category missions like every week, right? One for each one. There's how many categories in the game now? Just, you know, throw out new missions. Maybe even make them related to the new Dokkan Fest character so people would be more interested in summoning. I don't know. But yeah, part two looking pretty dry. Because as you can see here from the summary on the wiki, we are getting the LR Goku and Piccolo as expected. And we are getting the EZA for the STR Bardock. That was actually mentioned in the news. Um, and that finishes off the Team Bardock EZAs. Um, but that's it. No AGL Turles Easy A, unfortunately, which means I guess Bardock is the Easy A for part two, right? Because if we take a look at the uh, previous year, so this is June last year, this is where uh, the Ginyu release slot is for the, where we are now. Um, and he came with an Easy A, so I guess we would include the physical Ginyu Force, right, as this Easy A, or even these, right? They came out at like, the same time. Um, and then this is where LR Tapion and Minosha released. Uh, they came with a Dokkan Awakening for that free-to-play farmable trunks. And then they also came with the EZA for AGL Tapion, which as I talked about in the previous video, it makes sense for them to have released this at the same time as the LR, rather than in the later celebration when it actually released on JP, just because you kind of need to run these two units together for the LR to actually be, you know, good and worth running because of the, uh, the link set and everything. So this is where we are now. Um, this released on the 21st of June last year. This is going to be releasing uh, on the 19th at 10.30 p.m. PST, obviously in the US, in the UK for me or other places in Europe, it's in the morning on the 20th. So we are roughly at the same time, um, but we're getting the LR Goku and Piccolo. Pretty sure they don't come with a free-to-play unit, Awakening or EZA or anything. And then in this one slot here where there is an EZA, I guess that is the STR Bardock. <laughs> Free to play unit EZA that we were kind of already expecting anyway because all the uh, other members of Team Bardock have been getting their um, EZAs. And the thing is, if we look here, so this was obviously the end of June last year, so we got the LR release and an EZA, and there was a Petan battle, and then we go on to the beginning of July where there was a world tournament, and that's it. And then the, the anniversary starts on about the 7th of July. So, if we go by last year's schedule, what that means is that literally between now and the start of the anniversary officially, which again is going to be roughly the 7th of July, there'll be the small countdown campaign that probably starts on the, third, the first, second or third, depending on how the days line up this year. But that doesn't really obviously bring a huge amount of content, right? It just brings the actual countdown to the anniversary. So between now and then, which is what? Two weeks from today, basically. All we are getting on Global is a summonable LR who I don't even really think is worth summoning for for most people. I will do a separate video about his banner uh, like I always do before banners drop. 
um, and then the last of the free to play EZAs, which obviously you should do. Um, then Petan Battle, which is whatever. It's nice to get free orbs, but it's not really a game mode because you don't actually have to play it. It's just a nice little idle thing that you can do while you're not actually playing the game um, to get some free orbs, because orbs is definitely the best option to go for. And then a world tournament. So I'm assuming we are going to get a world tournament in this slot. It feels like it's been a while since we've had one on Global, which I'm sure some people will think is a good thing. Um, I just hope I'm working so I can actually uh, do some grinding, but I guess we'll see. Right before the anniversary as well is they've often dropped a world tournament. And I know a lot less people are hyped about like, I mean, who's really hyped to buy it, let's be honest. But a lot, a lot less people are interested in grinding out the world tournament. Because obviously, whilst you can still end up, if you've got a lot of stamina like I do on my account, I can spend quite a few stones to refresh stamina throughout the course of the weekend doing the world tournament and actually still end up with more stones than I started out with because of all the rewards that they give. But if you're somebody that has a lot less stamina, where you can only do like one or two runs potentially with your stamina bar, then it takes a lot of stones to keep refreshing and keep grinding the ranks. So right before the anniversary, I know a lot of people are not exactly going to be thrilled about the idea of wasting a whole bunch of stones. So I guess we'll have to wait and see until we get the proper in-game news, which I imagine will be the night before, right? So for me, it's the 20th. Like I said, it'll be the evening of the 19th. So it'll be, I guess, afternoon of the 19th if you're in the US. We'll get the actual official news update that shows that like this banner is coming out and everything. So hopefully in there, we'll get to see whether there is going to be a world tournament, whether there's going to be anything else, because... I mean, I don't know what else they could add that wouldn't have been in the files for the data download. So there's probably not going to be any sort of like, you know, big interesting surprise because there's just nothing in the data download apart from these two. Now, I haven't checked yet. The only thing I guess that I haven't seen that could be in the data is the fact that almost every single LR banner recently, we've been getting a ticket pack for Global. Um, and my plan, I've mentioned this before, is that I probably will buy the ticket pack for this Goku and Piccolo if there is one, and then I'll do that summon. But other than that, I'm not particularly fussed about summoning for this unit, me personally. Um, I'm going to pick up the sale stones and then just add those to my anniversary fund. Because these guys are really good. And bear in mind, this is the introduction of the Saiyan Saga category to Global. Because the Saiyan Saga was introduced to JP with Raditz, and Raditz won't be coming out on Global until after the anniversary. So these guys with their 4 key and 150% leader skill are actually going to bring the Saiyan Saga to Global, which is kind of cool. But unfortunately, the Raditz uh, celebration and the Part 2 LRs from the actual anniversary bring huge buffs to the Saiyan Saga category, which means if you do pull Goku and Piccolo now when they release on Global, the, super the uh, Saiyan Saga team that you can even make isn't really even that great, to be perfectly honest. So they're a cool unit, they're fun to have, um, I know people rate them quite highly even still because they have this uh, guard for the first 5 turns, pretty high stats, they greatly raise defense on their 18 key super, um, it's quite easy to get their 18 key super, they also get a bunch of buffs uh, if you're getting their ultra super and they get an additional attack buff with the uh, if you get 24 key. Um, so they can do a lot of damage as well as being good defensively. So people do rate this LR quite highly, but I honestly feel like at this point on Global, like if you pull them, what are you realistically going to do with them? I mean, their best link partner is the other LR, Goku and Piccolo, and they're on a couple of teams together, but they're teams that I don't really ever see people running. And then, yeah, it brings the Saiyan Saga, but that team really needs buffs before it becomes runnable against some of the harder content like you think about the anniversary coming up with the release of the red zone until the part two lrs come out and bring those big buffs with the kaioken goku in the great eight vegeta are you really going to be using a saiyan saga team in the red zone when we don't have any of these newer units so these guys are cool but i honestly don't feel like your box is really going to be any worse off if you don't have them going into the anniversary remember like you'll be choosing to summon for these guys like two weeks before the two best units in the game come to global so i mean that just seems crazy when you put it like that right and then of course we have the bardock i mean he's a free to play unit extreme z area you should obviously do it um you don't get any stones out of it really because if you want to do the extreme z area all in one day because of the stamina cost 
um, or at least I say all in one day, but if you want to do it like right away, you'll obviously, um, you actually have to refresh stamina to be able to complete the whole thing. But if you space it out over a couple of days, you know, it's a couple of free stones for you. Uh, his Easy A is actually very good. I did the video for Shugesh the other day and I was genuinely impressed with how good he was. But Bardock might actually be the best member of the team because he raises attack and defense on super as well as ceiling. He gets the same solid attack and defense 150 at the start of the turn. But he gets 20% attack and defense per key sphere obtained, which is a big boost for a nuke. 20% to both stats per key sphere obtained he also gets a chance to crit seven percent per key sphere obtained a uh, rainbow key sphere obtained and if you remember from the details the fascia if you have a bardock on rotation creates rainbow orbs and then he has 10 percent damage reduction per team bardock ally on the team so obviously on the actual team bardock team 50 percent damage reduction is obviously very good especially when he's raising his defense on super and potentially getting a ton of extra defense from orbs means he can actually work in slot one so that's the problem i guess is these two units are both good like this is a great free to play unit this is a great powerful lr but both of them are on teams that you just don't really run and this is all we're getting basically before the anniversary unless we do get a world tournament which i'm gonna assume that we will so a little bit disappointing. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. Are you looking forward to the LR Goku and Piccolo? Are you going to summon for them? Um, once we get the Bardock Easy A, I'll do the showcase for him. And then like I said in the other showcases, I'm going to take them all into Pure Saiyan's Extreme Super Battle Road, which I think will be quite interesting because their Easy A's are very good. But I guess we will have to wait and see. So let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, <laughs> What are you going to be doing over the next two weeks before the anniversary? Because I can see a lot of people are just going to be logging in, doing their daily missions, and then that's basically it. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store, and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.